Welcome back to the Transforming Your PowerPoint series. Today, I'm gonna to walk us through four different PowerPoint animations, but not just the normal PowerPoint animations you just click a button for. I'll show you how to make them even more engaging, plus I'll throw in a few interactive tips too. First, we have the fly-in animation, great for revealing your content, sliding out one after the other. So to make this in your PowerPoint presentation, our first step is to insert a rectangle onto the right side of our slide. From here, we're gonna go into our shape effects, go to shadow, and we want to offset right. From here, we will duplicate this shape, and we're actually gonna duplicate it three times, that way it covers our whole entire slide. Now, for formatting these shapes, we'll start with the far left one. Let's right click to format shape and have our background for this be a picture. So picture or texture fill, you can insert it if you have a picture from your files, or if you have want to search one online, you can do so as well. For formatting those other three shapes, we can change our fill color for those. Also have no outline there. We'll do the same thing for these other two. then we can add in our text. So to add in your text, you can just double click and add your text and format it as needed. I'm just going to copy and paste my text that I already have. Once all of those text boxes are on your slide and formatted as needed, it's time to add in those animations. So to add in those animations, let's start with our far left rectangle here. Click on the animations tab and then click fly in and we'll change our effect options to come from the left instead of from the bottom. Then we'll do this same process for all of the rest of our rectangles. So the reason that we do this separately is so that each of the rectangles comes in one after the other instead of all at once. Once you're done with all of the animations, you can do a quick preview so that way you can see it all in action. But let's add one more step to make this a little bit more interactive. So similar to PowerPoint's animations, we try considering using ClassPoint's draggable objects. So these draggable objects are great for activities like labeling, matching, sorting, revealing, and sequencing like we have on this slide here. So to make these objects draggable during our presentation, um, it works for any pictures, images, shapes, text boxes, you name it. So we'll go to the Inkno class point tab, click on more features, draggable objects, and then before we can toggle it on to be draggable, hold down the shift key and select each one of the objects that you want to make draggable. Hit that toggle and you're all set up. Don't have this Inkno class point tab? You can download class point for free from classpoint.io to make your presentations more interactive and engaging. Once it's downloaded, join us back here because when we enter our presentation mode, we can get that quick preview of our slide. And then once that last box appears, we can start our sequencing activity by clicking on the draggable objects icon on that class point toolbar. Then you can just go ahead and start moving around those objects. Next, we have the rise up animation, which piques your interest a little bit with that added bounce. That's a little bit different than our fly in animation that we just did. So to create this on our PowerPoint slide, we'll again first start in our insert tab, shapes, click on a rectangle, and we're gonna add four rectangles onto our slide. So we'll just duplicate this move it over and do, duplicate two more times there. Once you have all of the shapes on your slide, we're gonna select our first, hold down the shift key, and then our third rectangle. In our shape effects, we're gonna go to 3D rotation, and then we want this offset to the right. Let's see if I can get rid of this text box. There we go. All right, you'll see this one that's offset to the right, and then we're going to select our second and fourth. Same thing, shape effects, 3D rotation, and this time we'll do it to the left. Then we'll select all of our shapes. In our shape effects, go to reflection and we just want to do a bottom reflection here. Now that that precursor formatting is selected, now we can add in any text and images to create the rest of our slide. So I'll go through creating this first one. So you guys can double click to add any text. I'm going to just quickly copy and paste the text from this slide here. Add that into our shape. And we can also change our shape color in the shape format here. We can change this color and add in any images. So in our insert tab, go to pictures. I have one saved on my device, so I will add that one in here. 
Excellent. So continue to do the same thing for the rest of your shapes. I'm just going to quickly copy and paste the rest of the information on my slide. Once all the content is on your slide, then we need to group all of the content to each shape. That's why That way when we add in our animations, they all move together instead of separately. So we'll select our image, your shape, and then any text boxes that you added and click Control G to group them. So we'll do the same thing for each one of our shapes. And once that grouping is done, now we can go ahead and add in our animations. So select that first group that we have, go to that animations tab, and we're looking for the rise up animation. So you might not see it in these entrance effects. So to look for it, go to the more entrance effects and in the moderate section, you can click rise up. From there, we'll add our duration to 1.75, that way it's a touch slower. And we'll repeat that process for each one of our blocks here. Again, we do this so that way each one of those blocks comes in separately instead of all four at the same time. Now let's check out this animation in our presentation mode and show you guys another example of how to get your students to rise up during class with a spinning wheel of names. So once you're in your PowerPoint presentation, you can go through, check, a, take a look at a quick preview of this animation. See each one of those blocks rising up. Then to get your students to participate, in class point, you can either invite your students to join the class or select a class that you have created and preset pre with all of your students' names inside. So with this, then we can just click on our spinning wheel of names here. Select that spinning wheel and it will select a student that you can call on to participate or answer a question. For more information about the spinning wheel of names and those saved in public classes of ClassPoint, take a look at the information down below. Next, the zoom animation. This animation will definitely catch your audience's attention and is a little bit unconventional in its setup, which makes it super fun. It is still quite simple, so let's give it a shot. To set this up, go to the Insert tab, and we'll want to insert a text box onto our slide with 15 individual dashes in that text box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Once those 15 dashes are in, you can select it all, and we'll want to change up our character spacing. From here, we'll change it to very tight, and then we'll go into our shape format. Under Word Art Styles, we'll want to go to Transform, and then go to Warp, and we'll do Square. From here, it now looks like a rounded rectangle shape, but it still is individual text. And we actually want to make this thing our whole entire slide. So we'll make it larger so it covers the whole slide there. Then we'll want to insert a photo as a background for these shapes. So we'll click into there, right click, and select Format Text Effects. From here, we'll want to go into our text fill and add in a picture or an image. And once that's done, you'll see a little bit of flashing just to indicate that there still is those individual dashes. Now you can go ahead and add in any text onto this slide. So I actually have some text already created that I'm going to copy over. Then you can do the same thing for as many other slides as you want in your presentation. So we can just duplicate this slide. And if we again will exit this format shape, we'll want to right click to go to those text effects. Go to the side here, our picture texture fill, then we can change up the image that we have on that second slide. Then continue to add and change your text for, that other, for the other slides in your presentation. And once all of the text and images have been updated for as many slides as you want, it's now time to add in our animations. So from our animations, let's select that first slide that we have here. To make the animations possible, we wanna make sure we're selecting that whole text box. So select the side of your slide, make sure you're on that text box. And in our animations, we'll click the drop down arrow to zoom. And then let's open up our animation pane. We'll click this side arrow, go to our effect options, and then we're gonna change how it animates our text. So instead of all at once, we're actually gonna do it by letter. Then you'll be able to see that animation in action. We'll do the same thing for our second slide and then give it a quick preview all together. 
Now let's take a look in our PowerPoint presentation mode while I tell you guys how to make this a little bit more interactive. So if you wanna engage your audience without having to take the time of adding interactive quiz questions um, and creating slides for that into your PowerPoint presentation, we can actually use ClassPoint's AI to create that for us. So let's say you're on this slide when you already have some information on the slide. We can actually click the AI button on the ClassPoint toolbar here to generate a question based on that information on your slide. So the AI does all of the work for you. You can save it as a slide in your presentation and begin receiving those live audience responses and get that feedback from your audience instantly. For more information on ClassPoint's AI quiz question and how to set up the questions using Bloom's taxonomy, take a look at the video linked up above. Lastly, I have a morph transition trick for you all. Yes, technically morph is a transition, not a PowerPoint animation. However, with these tips, I'm gonna show you how to make it look like it's actually just an animation on your slide. So to get started, we're gonna start with a colored background or an image as our background. So in our format background, I'm going to add a picture for my background here. Once that's done, we can actually add in our title text for our slide. So you can insert a text box and add in your slide info. Before we go any further, let's duplicate this slide four times. So just do control D four times here, so that we have a total of five slides. Each one of these slides will correspond to a rounded rectangle that we're about to insert on our first slide here. So to do that, we'll go into the insert tab in shapes, select rounded rectangle, and we'll just add in a rounded rectangle onto our slide. So you can move it around. Control D to duplicate, put another one next to it. Control D again to put one beneath, and Control D again to fill in that last spot. Then to connect all of them, we're gonna add in a circle. So back in shapes, we'll do circle, hold down the shift key to create that perfect circle. Then you can adjust that circle to be right in the center of all of those shapes. Now let's format these shapes. So for this circle, I'm gonna leave our shape outline as black and our fill color for white. And we can do the same for our rounded rectangles. I'm gonna do a white. However, I'm going to have no outline for those rounded rectangles. So now that that is done, we can add in icons for each one of our shapes here. So in our insert tab, we'll go to icons and you can search up a corresponding icon that matches your content. For our example, we are doing seasons. So I'll go to nature and outdoors, select a corresponding icon and put it into the correct rectangle and continue adding in icons for each one of the shapes with a little home icon for the center circle. Once all the icons are on your slide, we're gonna add in some hyperlinks so that when each one of those icons or shapes are selected, it will lead us to another slide to make it look like it's just expanding and adding in more information. So we'll start in the home tab and from there we'll go to insert, links, go to action. And we want to hyperlink to a slide and we'll select slide one. That way, whenever we click that home tab, it will lead us back to this home slide that has all of the information collapsed. We'll do the same thing for each one of our icons and shapes. So go to links, action, again, hyperlink to a slide and we're gonna do slide two. So slide two will be our expanded information for our spring section here. We'll do the same thing for summer. However, the slide that we hyperlink to will be slide three. So continue doing this for all of the rounded rectangles on your slide that correspond to the slide in your presentation that you want to jump to. Lastly, for our winter, we will hyperlink to slide five. Now that all the information is hyperlinked and placed where we want it to, we are going to select all of it, control C to copy, and we're gonna paste this onto each one of our slides. So now that the basis template um, is done, now we can add in the extra information for each one of those sections in the rounded rectangle. So you can add whatever text as needed, just select the slide and make it larger. For our examples here, we're going to be using questions, that way we can better interact with our audience. So to do that, I'm just gonna copy our questions that I have from this presentation and stick around because I'm gonna show you how you can make these questions interactive and get live audience responses. 
Once the information is added onto your slides and for each rounded rectangle, then we can go ahead, select all of our slides to add in that morph transition. So on your slides over here, select Control A, then we'll go to Transitions, select Morph, and we can give it a quick preview of how those rounded rectangles will grow and show our added information. Before we check out this in our presentation mode to showcase to all of you how those hyperlinks work, as promised, let me explain to you how to make these slides and these questions interactive so you can get live audience responses. So to do that, we're actually going to be using ClassPoint and super simple, we just need to select the question type that corresponds to the question we have on our slide. So for spring, this one is a short answer question. I want my students to write out an answer to submit. And you can select any of the options in the side panel here. I'm gonna continue adding in the corresponding questions for all of the rest of the seasons. This is a fill in the blank with two blanks here with some correct answers that I can add in as well. For our fall, this is an image upload question. And winter, this one is a simple multiple choice question. We can make this question button a little bit smaller so it fits with four choices and with a correct answer. Let's enter our slideshow and showcase this template and get those live audience responses. So once we begin, if I click on any of the icons with the season, that information will appear from that growing rectangle. If I click black to home, it will go home and I can select another one to showcase that. And if we click on that class point button, you'll be able to start receiving those live student responses. For more information on how to invite your students to join the class so that they can submit and learning more about all of the different interactive quiz question types, take a look at the information down below. What a success. You have now learned how to totally upgrade four simple PowerPoint animations, something a little bit more engaging and exciting for your audience to keep them interested in your content. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and let us know in the comments if this video was helpful to you. I'll see you in the next video.